For 20 years, you've trusted us to reinvent the standard in sports nutrition products. We don't plan on stopping, just like you. What, because I'm confident in my ability that makes me arrogant? Why, because I'm not afraid to tell you that I'm sure of myself? Why, because I'm not afraid to tell you that I know I'm great? It's like, yo, anything, you, anything good you say about yourself, you bragging, or you being arrogant, or you not being humble. People overuse this word humble. Being humble means you know how to win gracefully and you don't have to throw it in people's faces. But guess what? It doesn't mean you're not being humble when somebody comes at you and you gotta hit them with your stats. What, so being humble means people get to come at you and you never supposed to respond. That's being humble, right? No, that's being a bitch in my league. What's going on, y'all? Andre Ferguson, IFBB Pro. We over here at Bev Francis, the East Coast Mecca. It's really the, it's really the Mecca Mecca. Forget the East Coast part, man. It's just the Mecca period. <laughs> I can get better along the season as I run the gauntlet, but I feel like to be in the prime spot to challenge for that Olympia title this year, I needed to rest and get significantly better. So when I show up to the Olympia, I don't want to show up just looking better. I want to show up and be like, God damn, he got a lot better. So after talking to my confidants and talking to Steve and talking to some other people, talking to me and them, they said, yo, Dre, you really don't got much to prove anymore. You won the Arnold. You won all these other shows already. Go rest your body and go prep your ass off and try to win the Olympia. So that's what we're doing for this one. Y'all got to say what up. Y'all got to say what up. Number three, classic physique over here. Yo. George the Bull. Damn right. I'm with my boy here, Andre Ferguson, number two yo, silver medalist, baby. But look, though, but look, <laughs> yo, if you feel how dense this dude is, yo, <laughs> I don't even know how he weighs in at 185. It's impossible. Bev's got these, like, little, like, machines that you won't find nowhere else, right? So they got, like, these shoulder machines here, right? And the angle that it hits hits perfectly on the insertion. So you might think, man, there's 50 of those. Yeah, but everyone hits a different specific muscle, different specific insertion. So when you want to build a muscle, everyone says this. Dre, what's the best exercise for this? Or the best exercise for that? And I tell them, none, you got to hit them all. Just hitting the shoulder doesn't give the shoulder the right shape. You have to hit the arm and the trap to give the shoulder the right shape. So when you look at this machine, right, if you notice, it's not like the regular shoulder, shoulder arm, shoulder uh, a lateral raise. If you notice, the seat is slightly face forward. And when the slight, the slight face forward in the seat, it makes it hit the insertion point perfect. I don't know, this might be a little bit too much weight, but we're gonna check it out though. Oh, now we good, we good, we good. So now, if you notice on the machine, the usual one, the bars are more here. So if you notice, the bars are in this angle and the seats push forward. So now, it's gonna hit all of this here. Instead of hitting it directly here, it's gonna hit it more in that angle. And if you notice a lot of people, they might have a, a medial delt and a rear delt, but that little piece of muscle in between it isn't there. It's like it's a weird ass part to hit. Weird ass muscle, but you'll you figure it out eventually. <laughs> I got nothing but love for Steve because you see I go in his office like I talk to him like a regular person. I don't need Steve to sugarcoat shit for me. I don't want him to. Yo, my man, you need to tell me the real. This guy's out of his fucking mind. <laughs> my man, Steve. Andre, what's going on, brother? Nothing much, brother. Oh, I gotta bring a picture. I need to be on this wall somewhere. 
No picture of you. I know, I know, I know. I'm gonna bring it. I'm gonna bring it. I'm gonna bring it in the frame too. No, you gotta bring it in the frame. I'll frame it. No, no, I'm gonna bring it in the frame. No, I'll frame it. No, don't trust me. I'm gonna bring it in the no, frame. No, I will frame it. Okay. So what's going on, big man? Just a man trying to make a living. Yeah, me too. That's it. That's it. It's been going all right. It's been going all right for me. I'm not really complaining. What about you gonna do next? Olympia. Okay. We're gonna sit out. I think um. This is the first time I've sat and I've actually sat out. You I know. know what I mean? I run the gauntlet. Yes. But um, I think it was time for me to take the break to get a little bit better. Because in the off season, I usually don't lift. I start underweight. Like in the, in the off season, I don't take two months off from even touching weights at all. And um, this year I thought, yo, the guys are getting big. Like we got Raymond out there. A lot of people say Raymond is getting too big. But no, he carries the weight right. Honestly, he doesn't look too big to me. It doesn't matter what you necessarily weigh on the scale. It matters no, it how matters it looks. it matters what you look. It matters how it looks. And he's a big frame guy with big wide shoulders. You're 6'2", six, 6'3". Six, yeah. how, how and he's wide frame too. What do you too. want him to do? <laughs> like, what he's got to come in do? like that. Because right, anything smaller than that, he starts looking stringy. He does. And he looked stringy last year. He he's did. put some good size on he this did. year. He looks different. He looks massive. Yeah. And But he flows. He looks massive, look, but he it flows. Looks good. It, it looks does look good. good. And his posing looks good. Like, he's he's showing you his body the best way he can show it to you. Yep. Because a lot of people get caught up with that, too, and I've been telling a lot of the amateur guys that. Don't do a pose because your favorite guy does it. I know, one of these. And then they go to the back. Oh, my God. It doesn't look good on some people. But you told me the best. Yes. Yo, Dre, we're not judging by bicep peaks. Front and so, back. So, go out there, show your money shots. Yep. And get the fuck off the stage. That's it. Bye-bye. What... what if I'm doing 15 poses, I give you more things to look at that you don't like. Right, that I'm not judging. That you don't. I'm but, not judging. But you might not judge him, but you might, might also think, see things you don't like. Absolutely. Uh, you know what? He's got a little bit of extra back fat right there that you wouldn't have saw if I didn't do 15, 15 poses. No, you're right. Front and back. That's all we need. So, I'm not even going to, like, if I see you in the gym, Craig, you my man, right? Yo, I'm going to make sure from man far away, I say what up. Because this way, I'm not inviting the convo. So now, one, I, yo, Craig, what up? Now when I get a little closer, I'm staring at the floor because if I'm still looking looking at you and giving you eye contact, you're going to come over like, oh, no, Jay. Then you want to have a 10-minute convo. No, we ain't here for that. We working. Another thing that I do when I work out, like, I learned this from Dorian Yates. I stopped training for the hour and a half, two hours. I get in the gym, 40 minutes, hour tops, and I get out of there. So... Sometimes I might only get four exercises in, but I got four really good exercises in. And um, it's quality over the quantity. People think that, oh, I gotta go on a back date and hit every friggin' damn back machine. No, why don't you go hit the quality, get quality reps in, quality lifts in, and go home and feed it. You don't have to sit here for three hours to work out to get big. A lot of people wonder why they come to the gym every day and don't get results. It's like I said yesterday. Just cause you're at the library don't mean you're reading. <laughs> so, a lot of people come here and they think they're working, right? So yes, you are physically putting the work in on the weights, but 80% of the work is not done on the weights. It's the homework. So now when you go home or when you leave the gym, you gotta go feed that. If you're not feeding the muscle enough, it's never gonna grow. And then after you go feed it, you gotta go rest. So, sitting on the couch is technically resting, but to me, you need to sleep. You need, sleep is what rests. Like, I don't care how long you sit on the couch and you think you're not moving, your body's still actually operating. When you're sleeping, your body is shut off. You're in a fast, like your body's shut off. So, if you got the time, the best thing to do is like, go train, go eat, go take a nap. I got second last year at the Olympia and I won the Arnold. The opportunity is sitting right in front of me. If you look, if it was gambling, you'd be the morning time favorite. But I tell everyone this, the shows aren't one on IG. They're not one on your practice. They're not one on the internet, no. They're one on stage. You can look the best two days before a show and not look the best on the stage. And it'll look great the day after. It don't matter. What matters is at 2 o'clock, whatever time prejudging is, that's when we're judging. We're not judging at 1 o'clock. We're not judging at 3 o'clock. At 2 o'clock, it is what it is. At 4.30, it doesn't matter what happened. No. And I think if I do everything that I need to do, I think everything takes care of itself. Well, you got great shape, and you, you put on some more size. You're going to be tough. How you been? Say more, man.
Yeah. Um, just finished training. We doing a little something for Generation Iron. Uh, oh, Craig, oh, yeah. Craig, Craig, nice, nice, Craig nice. Over there. Cool, cool. Oh, oh, yo, say what up to the people, y'all. Hey, what's up, guys? Generation Iron. <laughs> All right, I don't hold you up no more. Yo. Brother, great seeing you, man. Seeing you, brother. Hey, yo, nice to meet you, brother. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice oh, she's a hugger. She's a hugger. I'm a hugger too. A lot of people say, oh, it's me versus me, right? And I get it, it's you versus you. It's you versus you during the prep. When you get to the competition, it ain't you versus you no more. It's you versus them. I'm sorry, me beating me don't win shows. Me beating them wins the show. Andre, you know what, he, he, he honestly, his lip and Nathan's lip, I don't know, that'd be a good contest. I like to see those two just, just give it up on the lips because they could talk, both of them. That also helps the show too, it's entertaining. Who wants to see a damn boring show? Nobody. Just like with this show, with the New York Pro, there's been all that bicker going back and forth. It's great. I love it. As a promoter, I love it. When have you seen an open bodybuilding show with 30 people in it? And all going at each other. And I don't know who's going to win because I think there's about there's six a, guys in the show that honestly, can win. Honestly, there are six, at least six guys. See? <laughs> See? No, it's going to be a great show. It's, it's, this is going to be the best New York Pro ever. I think so. I agree. The talking and the animosity it builds because, man, like, we all chasing the same thing. I get it. And I'm kind of the person in the pole position, so a lot of the energy comes at me. And I get that part too. But you ain't gonna talk however you feel like talking to me. I'm a grown man. And you ain't gonna disrespect me. And guess what? It's not if you feel you disrespected me. It's if, if, it's if I feel that way. And if you, if you cross certain lines with me, I'm gonna turn up on you. And when I turn up, I'm gonna be relentless about it. And I feel it's not up to you to tell me, oh, Dre, it should be over now. Yo, let the stage talk. No, I'm going to keep going till I feel it's over. And honestly, it's never over until I bury you. Because if we're in a conflict, Craig, I want all your market space. I do. Like, I'm saying that dead serious. Like, I want, you ain't eating on my block no more, bro. Like, I want everything you getting. If we're in a conflict, that's what it is. Raymond's my dog, and I don't care if Raymond beats me. It's whatever. It's nothing but love. But when I'm in a conflict with you, my man, you can't get nothing over here. Nothing. I mean nothing. I don't want you to live. I don't want you to eat. I don't want you to get none of that. No. The DJ gonna stop playing your records, bro. They're gonna stop playing your records. And some people could look at me like, yo, Dre's an asshole, this, that, and the third. I'm really not an asshole. I'm not. When you get to meet me, I'm not an asshole. But guess what? This is my livelihood and you ain't stepping on my toes.